Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Are you perfect? Hello, Pastor Sam here, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. The reason I ask you that question is that I asked you the same question last week, and I delivered the first part of this message I entitled, How to Be Perfect. Well, here's the remainder. I believe you're going to love it. When God tells us in his word to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect, that's a tall order. But God never tells us to do anything that we're not able to do. And I want to share with you from the word of God what that really means and how it can be a blessing to your life. If you would like the entire message, all you have to do is call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. And I'll send it to you absolutely free. It's called How to be perfect. Let's get together now. We're going into a service where the power of God is at work, and I'm speaking on the subject, how to be perfect. Now, there are five things that you need to know to be perfect. Are you ready? You might want to write these down somewhere. And by the way, how many of you write in your Bible? Raise your hand. Shame on you if you don't. If you can't write in your Bible, you need to package that thing up and send it to the Smithsonian. That's what it's for. Well, I would never do that. Sure, you, you ought to. Make yourself some notes. And when you got it all marked up, give it to somebody you love. I've given several to my daughter. I'm going to give some to my grandkids. And now when I, if the Lord tarries and I'm dead and gone, they'll say, look here what Papa did. Look what he wrote in there. Praise God. God gave him a revelation. You can write it in your Bible if you want to. You're not blaspheming. But you need to write these down somewhere, five things. Number one, understand the biblical concept of perfection. It can mean to be complete or it can mean to be finished. It can mean to be grown up, to be mature, to be an adult, to be fully grown. And God knows we need to grow up, don't we? Sometimes perfection means loving others, 1 John 4, 12. Sometimes perfection means controlling your tongue. Hello, James 3, 2. Sometimes perfection means being free from fear, 1 John 4, 18. Sometimes perfection means confirming your faith with works, James 2, 22. Sometimes perfection means obeying God's word, 1 John 2, 5. Sometimes perfection means that you are complete and lack nothing and you allow patience to work its perfect work in you, James 1 and 4. You should know what it means when God says, be perfect. Amen. Then number two, you ready for this? Understand your personal limitations by honestly evaluating yourself. When we do communion, and we do that once a month, uh, somebody one time told me, said, do you ever do communion? I've been going to your church for years. I said, yeah, we do it the first Sunday in every month. <laughs> I said, what time do you get here? She said, 11 o'clock. I said, we've already been having a church hour when you get here. Oh, I didn't know. It starts at 10, and usually we do it the first thing. But communion is always a time of introspection. It should be a time of soul searching. It should be a time when you say, okay, let me ask the Holy Spirit now to shine his searchlight into my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me, if there's any evil way in me, if there's anything that displeases him. I want the blood of Jesus to cleanse it, and I want the Holy Spirit to energize it. So be honest about yourself and be willing to evaluate yourself. You know what is so crazy? Today in our world, anytime you offer constructive criticism to somebody, they consider it a personal affront. I need some, I, I need a safe space. You said something to me that hurt my feelings. You can't hurt my feelings. Well, you, who are you to, to hurt my feelings? You know, in the Bible, when Jesus preached the truth, people seemed to appreciate the fact that he was pointing out their sins to them. Because how could they be free if they didn't know what they were? Jesus met a woman at the well, and he told her, you've had five husbands. You're living with a man now. It's not your husband. She got so excited, she went and told everybody, said, you got to come see this guy. He told me everything I've ever done. This is the Messiah. Today, if you tell people their sins, they say, well, I'm never coming back to this church again. 
I can't believe you exposed my sin. Well, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but wouldn't it be better for you to know by looking at the Word of God and hearing the Word say, this is wrong, you'd be to quit it, instead of just doing it and doing it and doing it until it wrecks your life? I mean, honestly, would that be, wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't that be better? Well, that's what, that's what you need to do. And every criticism has a kernel of truth in it, everything. Every time somebody comes to me with something, it may not be, the whole thing may not be true, but I need to listen to them because there's, there's some truth in there somewhere. You know, maybe you misinterpreted something. Maybe you, 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 somebody told you something that was true, but maybe I need to say, okay, here's your complaint. Let me look at that because maybe there's something in there, you know, that, that, that I need to listen to. I mean, honestly, I, I don't, I, once a year I go for a checkup. I went not long ago and I did a thorough checkup and the doctor told me something that shocked me. He said, you need to listen to me. He said, you are absolutely too good looking for your height. I said, I didn't know that. And I'm taking into consideration all you tall, ugly people. Now, I understand. I know. I feel your pain. Well, yourself. Now, watch this. <laughs> Somebody said, why does he say stupid stuff? Just to get your attention, see if you're listening. How many are listening? Say amen. amen. Believe God, accept what he says in the word, experience his forgiveness, and understand your own limitations and weaknesses. Some people think it's a generational curse when somebody's an alcoholic. You know what it is? A long time ago, the devil tested people that were related to you. They tried this and this and this, and guess what they came up with? This works. So they tempted your great-granddaddy. They tempted your granddaddy. They tempted your daddy. And now they're tempting you. Why? Because the devil has been around a long time and he doesn't use what doesn't work. So he says, if I got them to be a drunkard, maybe I can get you. So he's using what he thinks works on you. Can I tell you something I had a blood transfusion at Calvary, and now I am a child of God. Hallelujah. So whatever the devil used against my great-granddaddy and my granddaddy and my daddy will not work on me because I have been to Calvary. God is my father. Amen. Now, now but, but listen, you, you, you got to understand if there is something that you have an inclination to do, stay away from it. <laughs> if pornography is your problem, take your computer out of your bedroom and put it in the living room. You're less likely to get on some of those sites. Well, hello, somebody. Say, oh, now you're talking just practical common sense. You know what? The Bible's full of common sense. You ought to read it sometime. Read the book of Proverbs. If there's something that really cranks your tractor, you need to watch out and avoid that thing. If somebody's got a problem with drink, you don't go get a job as a bartender. Use your head. Amen. Somebody said, boy, the only thing I can't resist is temptation. Well, you got a real problem there because there is no temptation taking you but such as is common to men. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. But evaluate your makeup. What is it about you that has a tendency to, to go off the rails? Then Focus on that and say, okay, that's an area where I really need God to help me. Come on, somebody. Am I preaching all right? All right. Praise the Lord. Just check it. Now, here's the number three thing. Understand that you cannot stand still. God's call requires action. Two words I want you to, to, to do. Two words. I want you to tell your neighbor, do something. Do something. Oh, you, you didn't convince me. Go ahead and look at him. You've been wanting to tell him, especially if it's your companion. Do something, for goodness sake. Do something. Do something. We grow as we go. One time a woman came in where Jesus was being celebrated, but they weren't ready to embrace him for who he is. They just said, this guy is a great teacher. And so they're asking him questions, but this little lady who had been delivered from demon possession slipped in and got down at his feet, and she took a box of spicknard of ointment. Now, you know what that is? Listen, that is priceless, and I'm just using my imagination now. I got a good one. If you don't have one, you can borrow mine this morning. Do you know where she got that? She was a prostitute. 
So the money that she made as a prostitute, she took it and bought this ointment of Spickner, this alabaster box. And that just kind of blows your theory about if somebody won the lottery, if I'd take the money. I say, pour it on Jesus' feet. Amen. <laughs> so she, she had this alabaster box, and she broke it and poured it on the feet of Jesus and wept until her tears fell on his feet and took the hair of her head and dried his feet. And the people in the room were incensed. They said, what in the world is going on here? Why, that could have been sold and we could have fed the poor. And Jesus said, you have the poor with you always. But he said, what this woman did will be remembered for time and eternity. Because, now watch, she did what she could. Are you doing what you can? Most of the time we say, well, you know what we need around here? I'm about to hear it, I know. Well, you know what we need around here. And then you, see, you want to serve the Lord, but just in an advisory capacity. If God put it on your heart that we need something around here, maybe you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Amen? Think about it. Why would he put that on your heart if you're not supposed to hit it up? That'd be a ministry just perfect for you. And then you wouldn't have to come to church and say, you know what we need around here? The only problem when you start doing it and people criticize you, you'd get all bit out of shape about it. Like, oh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying though? Do something. Just go, even if it's imperfect, do something. I had one fellow one time, he said, I don't like that church. That sometimes the pastor would give an altar call, but he'd just make everybody, they, they pray in their seats. I believe they ought to get out and walk down the aisle and get down there in the altar. That's the way to do it. Well, I think that's wonderful. I think that's great. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed of me before men to declare who you are. But yet there are times when the enemy will use something like that to keep somebody from making a decision. I've had more and more and more and more people tell me over the years, you know what, you don't even know when I really got saved, but it was when you had everybody join hands, and I prayed that prayer, and God forgave me and changed my life. I'm not in the business of trying to humiliate people just for the sake of my tradition. See, do something, even if it's imperfect. Do something, even if it doesn't measure up. Do something if somebody else will think it's flawed. If you want to be perfect, just go ahead and do something. Praise God. Now here, you, are you still with me? Somebody say amen. I'm almost through. Understand this, that even though you have imperfections, you are a treasure in the sight of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We are earthen vessels filled with precious, precious treasure of God's Spirit. No wonder Paul said, When I'm weak, I'm strong, because it's not about me. Now, can, can I preach a little bit to you? Because we got time, don't we? What time is it? I, oh, yeah, my goodness, we got plenty of time. Just relax. I'm going to preach a little bit to you. Back in the first century, the church had a problem with Gnostics. Everybody say Gnostics. See, now you're a Greek scholar. It's spelled G-N-O-S-T-I-C-S, -S, Gnostics. You know what it meant? It comes from the Greek word gnosis, which means to know. So they thought they had superior revelation and knowledge so they didn't engage in prayer and things like that because they thought well I don't need to because I already got the inside track I know God's mind and I know everything so I don't even have to live right I don't have to live a holy life I, all I got to do is just operate in this knowledge I have this superior knowledge and I look down upon you because you do not have it and if you knew what I knew then you could walk in health and happiness and joy. Uh, hello. Does that ring true in the 21st century? Because you got people that think that on the basis of their knowledge that they're going to get something you could never get. I want to tell you something. Listen carefully to me. God never put his blessings up on the top shelf where somebody, only somebody standing on intellectual tiptoe could reach up there and get it. God does not hide his best gifts from people and say, you're just too ignorant to know what to do. I watched a guy on television, and I see this guy quite often, and why I keep watching him, I do not know. It makes my blood pressure go up. 
But he said, I want to sing a little song for you people that are not rich. He said, if you're a child of God, you ought to be rich. He said, it goes like this. How ignorant you are. How ignorant you are. So buy my keys, my wisdom keys, and I will show you how you can be rich, how you can have riches. Now, folks, I don't know if you and I are on the same page, but I got a feeling that when we get to heaven, there are going to be people that were never rich in this world, but the Lord is going to say to them, well done, good and faithful servant. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have a head full of knowledge. You don't have to have this superior air and pretense about you that you're holier than everybody else. But you should, as a child of God, recognize that even though you might be an earthen vessel, what you have on the inside is still priceless. I may not look like much to you and you may not be impressed with me, but you don't know who lives in me and you don't know what I have inside of me. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. So even though you may be an earthen vessel, common, there is a precious treasure on the inside and God calls you with all of your imperfections a special treasure. Let me tell you how much God loves you. Jesus said, what shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? You were redeemed not with corruptible things, the Bible says, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I was watching. Anybody ever watch the auto auctions? Barrett Jackson, Meekum. Man, I love those things. Do you watch those? Man, I see something going through there. So, ooh, I'd like to have that. And sometimes it's like, man, I didn't believe you. I could have actually bought that if I'd have been there. And then there's some like, I can't touch that. I saw a Corvette come through there one time, the first one ever made. And it had Oldsmobile on the back of it because that's who made it first. And they didn't want it. And Chevrolet ended up with it. One million dollars is what it went for. Now, it probably was not a better car than the one I owned. I owned a 76 Corvette one time. And I was so proud of that car. It was ragged out when I got it, but I fixed it all up. And a little woman in the church ran over the top of it, came to prayer meeting one morning and ran over it. And I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, because I must have been too proud. But she just ran. She came and said, Pastor, I think I hit your little car. I said, you did. I went out there and I said, Lord, lady, you didn't. You ran over my car. She had a great big Buick. She's about blind. She had big old thick glass. So I didn't see it. Said She went over my car. I didn't cuss, though. Glory to God. And so, I, didn't, I guarantee you that that one is not a better car than the one I had that she ran over. But I can tell you what, it wasn't worth a million dollars. You know what made it worth a million dollars? Somebody paid a million dollars for it. You say, well, I'm not worth much. Well, how much did it cost to redeem you? Come on. Come on. Wow. You were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. You're worth more than the $6 million man. Hallelujah. God gave everything that meant anything to him so that you could be saved. Boy, that'll make you want to smile, won't it? Hallelujah. Praise God. So here's the last one I'm closing with this. Renew your mind in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that you put off concerning the former conversation, which means lifestyle, the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My mind needs to be renewed every day in the Holy Spirit. I need to ask him right now, God, renew my mind so I have the right, the right mind to operate in. Every, everything depends on what kind of mind you're operating in. Somebody say, oh, you, you're just talking about positive thinking. Well, I can't think of any positive thing that happens without some positive thinking, right? God wants you to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
I remember years ago, I pastored in Alabama, and the church was growing. It was a fantastic season in my life. And But most everybody it was, you know, it was such quick growth that it was kind of almost like an inverted pyramid. So you had small a number of people in leadership down here and the church is growing this way and that's that's the wrong model it ought to it ought to be like a pyramid grows with a big base so you have a large base of of leadership and that's why many of you I'm, I'm asking you to plug in and get involved because i'm telling you it's coming it's coming people are going to pour in here and we've got to have solid people in leadership that you, you can depend on that are faithful but I was struggling with that because it seemed like I didn't have a moment to myself. I'd go down to the train tracks and just watch a train go through towns because it's the only thing I didn't have to push. I went to work one morning and the devil got in a car with me. The devil, devil ever get in a car with you? Come on now. By the way, you got to be careful about what you listen to on the radio. Because music is the only thing that, that can come into your spirit without permission. That's why it's so powerful. See? And some of y'all, some of, I don't listen to that hard rock stuff, that old devil music. No, what you listen to is Willie Nelson. Whiskey River, take my mind. Ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Be careful. You know, you could get some of my CDs and listen to them. Guy called me the other night, middle of the night. He said, would you please tell me how I can get a hold of your preacher? I said, well, you know, I'm on uh, YouTube. You can go to our website. I got miracles still happen out there. Just you can hear me preach. He said, thank you so much. I said, why are you calling me in the middle of the night about that? He said, I can't sleep, and every time I hear you, you make me sleepy. So don't try to drive and listen to me. You might fall asleep. <laughs> Devil got in my car and said, you know, people don't appreciate you. And I got to tell you, he tells me that sometimes even now. People don't appreciate you. They don't love you. You don't care nothing about you. Here you are giving your all and killing yourself. Who do you think anybody's going to care? If you died, they wouldn't even remember you three weeks from now. They don't care about you. And so the people that work with you, they don't care either. You need to go fire them all. <laughs> and I had a school of 250 kids. I was going to go home. I was going to go to the office, fire the principal, the vice principal. <laughs> I was going to fire my staff. I was going to start all over again. Now, wouldn't that have been stupid? You talk about being under pressure. I mean, that's the way I felt. I just, Ugh. and then it dawned on me. I'm letting the devil take control of my mind. Because that's all he's doing. That ain't true. He's, the devil lies. How many of you know the devil's a liar? So he's lying to me. And then it hits me. I pulled the car over. But I didn't get out of the road all the way. I should have. But I pulled the car over. I was so mad. And I jumped out. And I walked over. The, I opened the door. I said, devil, you get out of my car right now. People honking the horn. I'm talking to somebody they can't see. But I said, you get out of my car. If you get to the office today, you're going to have to walk. Slam the door and go, you know, I know it's crazy. And somebody said, yeah, I, that confirms. I thought you were crazy. That, that is a, a confirming word right there. But such peace came in that car and all day long. And I've had to do that several times in my life. Maybe you need to renew your mind. Maybe the thoughts that you're thinking are not of God. Maybe the thoughts you're thinking about your companion, about your loved ones, about your friend, about your pastor, about your church, about your job. Maybe there are thoughts the devil has put in your mind and you need to cast them out in the name of Jesus and replace them with the truth. Somebody say amen. Let's pray together right now, shall we? Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and I am desperate for you. I am not perfect in myself. But your word says that you are Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord God, our righteousness. We stand complete in you. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God through faith in Christ. 
I receive Christ. I receive into my life the one who's pure and perfect. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. My heart is perfect before you because of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God heard that prayer, and I want to hear from you. Please call me now. 804-744-8881 is the number to call. 804-744-8881. And when you call, request the message, How to Be Perfect. I'll send to you the entire message on CD. It's free. It's postpaid. Enjoy it. Share it with somebody else. Will you do that? Again, the number to call one more time is 804 844-8881. After you receive Christ into your heart, what do you do? You find the right church, a Bible-believing church, a Spirit-filled church, an on-fire church. Why not join me this Sunday right here at Victory Tabernacle for two full hours of praise and worship, ministry from the Word of God, and always a time together in His presence around the altar. Starts at 10 o'clock, usually around noon we're walking out the door, but we just kind of lose sight of time when we get together in His presence and there are great things happening. Lives are being changed. It's my desire to reach the unreached, to touch those who have not been touched with the good news of the gospel and the message of God's love. And that's what we're about. So please check us out today. Remember the last Sunday in every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service in our chapel at six o'clock. So be sure to join us then. Also remember that during the week, you can find us here on Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, seven o'clock in our family enrichment night service where we have something special for every age group and every member of the family. It's fun, it's exciting, it's relevant. Starts at seven, goes till 8.30 promptly. I hope you'll come because if you do, you'll come back again and again. Go to our website, victorytab.org. That's victorytab.org. And check out our 24-hour radio internet network called Battle Cry. If you love gospel preaching, if you if you love Christian music, if you love testimonies, if you love uh, uh, Bible prophecy, if you love, uh, you know, we got a couple hours of, of just ministry in Spanish. So be sure to tell your Hispanic friends about that. And uh, I think that you, uh, you're going to be blessed. Oh, by the way now, remember you can have this entire message on how to be perfect if you call me at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Thank you for joining me today on the program. And until we're together again, just like this, around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. Get the latest Victory Tab information by going to Facebook, just by typing in Victory Tab into your Facebook search. You can also join us in conversation by going to Twitter or Instagram, typing in Victory Tab RVA. 